Good evening and welcome to the October 14th meeting of the Civil Service Commission. And we have roll call, please. Commissioner Manukian. Here. Commissioner Abkarian. Here. Chair Devine. Here. For the record, Commissioner Yakubian is absent. And I believe Commissioner Gazarian will be joining us shortly. Very good, thank you. Before we get started, I have a quick comment I have to make. Uh, as we all know that these commissioners and board members throughout the city are great citizens who devote their time to give back to the city. And tonight we have a commissioner that I believe has gone above and beyond the call of duty in doing his uh, giving back to the city, and that's Commissioner Manukian, who is here on his birthday. <laughs> and uh, I think that deserves a recognition and a thank you and a, a very happy birthday, so. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. When you get as old as Sam is, it, it really, birthdays don't matter anymore. <laughs> okay. Whoa. See? Anyway, may we have the next item, please? Thank you. Minutes? Um, I can't, I have to abstain because okay. I wasn't here. Uh, I will wait till uh, you, you will. Commissioner Gazarian is here. Cause okay. He okay. was here. Okay, next item, please. Oral communications. Okay, I have no cards. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the commission? Seeing none, we'll move to the next item, please. Recruitment and examination report. And we have a Mr. Doyle replacement. So please, Ms. Martin. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, this is the recruitment and examination status report, which represents the current recruitments in process. We currently have approximately uh, 50 processes in effect. And as you can see, the uh, report indicates the um, date opened, date closed of the recruitments, as well as the various dates of the uh, testing components. Um, if you have any questions, I will be happy to try and answer them. Um, otherwise, this is a note and file item. Any questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll move to the next item, please. Eligible list established. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, these are the eligible lists that were established since our last meeting. Again, as you can see, staff has been quite busy administering various examinations um, over the course of the last month. Many of these processes involve multiple uh, components, including written examinations, performance exams, and oral exams. Um, most of the open recruitments yielded a large number of uh, applicants, but uh, with the various exam uh, components after those exam components were administered, uh, the number of individuals on the eligible list largely decreased. Um, again, this is a note and file item, but if the commission has any questions, I would be happy to try and answer them. I have just one quite quick question. On the Human Resources Associate, when there says promo and open, there's 685 applications for eligible. Are those four uh, promo? All four of those that were eligible were promo? Actually, only one of those candidates was a promo. Is um, that right? The, the uh, uh, remaining candidates were from the open list. Okay, interesting. Okay, thank you. Okay, next item, please. Class specification for approval, police supervisory and management series, and job bulletin for approval, police captain. Chair Devine, let the record show that Commissioner Gazarian has arrived. You're just in time. I know. Thank you. Perfect. Sorry, I'm late. It's Please. traffic. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, uh, the item before the commission uh, is uh, twofold. A class specification revision for the police supervisory and management series, as well as a job bulletin for approval. Uh, the police department has requested to make a modification to the educational requirement uh, for the position of police captain to expand the eligibility criteria for those uh, applying for the position. Um, specifically, the request has to do with the post management certificate. The uh, California Post Commission oversees the standards and training requirements for law enforcement agencies throughout the state. And with regards to the post management certificate, uh, which was a requirement for the police captain, um, uh, candidates uh, were required to hold the post management certificate. However, um, due to the amount of time that it takes post to issue the certificates, the department is requesting to modify the education requirement to allow candidates who possess or are eligible and have applied for uh, the post management certificate to be eligible to apply. Uh, that's uh, other than uh, other minor changes. That's the significance of the revisions to the class specification. 
The second request before the commission is the job approval, a job bulletin approval for uh, the position of police captain. Um, as the uh, commission is uh, aware that not all job bulletins have to come before the commission for uh, approval prior to posting. There are certain circumstances where job bulletins come before the commission. Um, for example, executive recruitments um, if, uh, come before the commission prior to posting. If we are changing the minimum requirements from uh, a, a, a bulletin that is inconsistent with the class specification that was previously approved, that would have to come before the commission. Um, also, if a bulletin was recruited for on a promotional level, a uh, promotional basis, and we are requesting to post on an open basis, that too would come before the commission. And the last circumstance is if it's a public safety bulletin for approval, which is the uh, uh, case uh, for police captain. Um, with the approval of the commission uh, to post this um, the position of police captain, uh, we would post uh, on a promotional basis from October 19th through October 30th, and uh, the examinations will likely take place in uh, December. There is one additional uh, change to the job bulletin, um, which has to do with the selection process. In the past, the police, police captain selection process consisted of a written assessment and an oral interview process. The interview consisted of two different panels, a professional panel um, consisting of outside law enforcement professionals and a community slash internal uh, panel consisting of a number of community members as well as internal city of Glendale staff. Uh, for this particular selection process, uh, the department is looking to change the selection process to only include the professional oral interview uh, panel. The uh, Glendale Management Association has been uh, given an opportunity to review the job bulletin request as well as the class specification um, changes. And with that, um, that concludes the report on this specific item. Um, Chief Castro is here to answer any questions you may have as well as our staff uh, member, Russ Kwan, who also worked on the <coughs> to the class specification and the job bulletin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to break protocol. I'm going to ask the questions first this time, if that's okay with my colleagues, and uh, then the rest can chime in. I do have several questions. Uh, first of all, on the uh, post management certificate requirement, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, there's something in there that says even though they're going to be able to apply for the position and take the exam uh, without actually having the certificate in hand, is there something in there that says they will not be appointed? until they actually have that post certificate? Well, in order to apply for the job, they have had to make the application to post. So the application is in process and will be awarded. They can't even make an application unless they're eligible for it. So it's just a post process in order to issue it. So to be eligible for the test, by doing this change, we're broadening the number of applicants that can now test in this process, giving a bigger pool to select from. Uh, through the process, but to apply as the change uh, specifies, they ha basically have all the requirements for the certificate. It's just a matter of Sacramento processing their certificate and getting it down to them in a timely manner. And this change allows those applicants who are eligible, have applied, now they can test in this process for this go around. Otherwise, it would eliminate a couple of uh, lieutenants who potentially then would not be able to compete in this current process. Thank Chair, Chair Devine, if I, if I may ask for a follow-up on that, because that was an area of concern for me. Uh, what I had in mind in terms of asking clarification was it says they should have it or should have already applied. And my comment that I wrote when I got the package was what if they fail? So it's not a test. So once they've applied or they're eligible to apply, it's just a pro forma process that you're trying to not cause it to hinder the uh, eligibility, technical eligibility 
at Correct. an earlier date than otherwise. And this has only become a problem in the last five or ten years with reductions in the staffing at post in Sacramento, that this used to take a matter of months, is now taking up to six months to nine months for them just to I issue see. it. But they do have it. So it's okay. like you pass the bar and you're waiting for your card, you're good to go, but I you're just waiting for that. That's how this is. All right. Great. First, thank you. Please. That answers my question. Any more questions That's on it? that particular issue? I, I have a lot of questions, but I'm going to wait. Just on this particular issue. Okay. Just issue. on this particular All issue. Right. My question was, uh, should there be excuse me? Should there be a note in here saying um, saying that they would um, within a 24 month period they would then possess the post certificate that they are to possess the post certificate within 24 months from the date that they actually submit their application? They've submitted the application; they're eligible, but shouldn't there be a time limit as to? But but that time limit, Commissioner uh, Abkarian, I think is from what I'm hearing from the chief is really beyond the control of the applicant or, or the police department. Yeah, so it's basically place, a Sacramento uh, paperwork. It's that, so it's that's speak. true. It's we have no control and the applicant has no control of it and I have no control of it other than to call Sacramento and ask to them to speed it up. But it's just their process and the delays, like I said, have been longer since they have cut back on their staffing. Let me just understand, just, uh, just assume that I'm I'm, I'm really uh, don't know anything, which I don't. Uh, so the post certificate, you submit, you submit paperwork as you completed A, B, and C, for example. I'm not sure what you need to complete the post certificate. And then you, the, the state receives, the post receives that doc, the documents, reviews it to ensure that it's completed, and then they go ahead and issue you a post certificate. Correct. And, and to fill out the application, you have to have all the boxes checked so that you have to have completed so many courses that have, were successfully completed and submit those certificates. You have to have been a lieutenant for a post-certified California police agency for a specified time so you show their records to indicate that. I used to be a post instructor, so I, I know a little bit about post. Uh, and, and, and my follow-up question to Commissioner Abkarian's concern is the following. Does the police department that would be you, the chief. Uh, make sure that when the applicant is saying, I've completed the post requirements, that they in fact have. So that when they are being uh, considered eligible, they in fact are eligible, and it's just a matter of the licensing, so to speak, to be issued to make the parallel. Yes, many times the chief of police has to sign off on those applications to ensure that all the records, all the training has exactly. been completed. Right. So uh, it is that. And, and at times I have to call Sacramento if an employee says, look, we've applied for this application or this certificate and it's being delayed. You know, we meet with the director of post twice a year as police chiefs in the county and we express our concerns in some of these and it's always if you need them quicker call us and we'll do what we can for you okay thank you thank you commissioner Perry. Perry, do you have any further on that mr Lucan? uh the next area of questions concern is the uh, bulletin itself and uh has to do with the elimination of the second panel as part mm -hmm. of the interview process and uh i guess my first question is why is it being eliminated this is a style of, of, and a choice for me as the new police chief. This is my first promotion to the level of executive managers as captains. Um, I've sat on six different captains' orals throughout the county in the last uh, year and a half, and they all follow the same kind of tradition. My plan is the oral panel I will have will be professional police chiefs as well as non-police chiefs. So it's going to be a little bit of a crossbreed of panels, but. To find the best applicant, I, I believe that works. Having gone through the process here and just sat on the fire chief's process, community panels, I think, are absolutely essential for directors to have, but for the internal staff of who I need to make sure is the right person for me at this particular time in the history of the Glendale Police Department, I take nothing away from the community's input, but I would hope that my interactions in the community, that my connections to the community, tell me what the community wants in the police department and its staff in terms of their involvement and allows and trusts me to make sure that the panels I will select will have that same values and know exactly what I'm looking for at this particular date and time. It is in no means a, a way or to insult or take anything away from the community's input, but sometimes the community just doesn't understand 
all the intricacies of what a chief needs for his number two people in running the organization at this particular date and time. And some of that information I can't share with the community without breaching confidentialities and other things that would be inappropriate. May I comment on that? Uh, actually, uh, that is another area that, of mine that I was going to inquire about. And, and, and I was going to preface it, and I will now, with actually um, uh, suggesting that I kind of like it. Uh, having not spoken to you about this, uh, if I had an opportunity to speak with you as a, as a concerned community member, I would have perhaps suggested that you do away with that second panel. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll be blunt, because I don't need to be anything other than what I feel comfortable in being. You are going to keep, Chief, the outside law enforcement professionals panel, which is going to be made up of police chiefs and non-police Chief. chiefs, correct? Yes. Right. And what you are asking to forego is the community internal panel consisting of a number of community members as well as internal city of Glendale staff, correct? Correct. All of that is correct. going to be do away, done yes. away with. I like it very much for only one reason. Uh, I have been privy over the last 20 years as a resident here uh, many times where outside panels come in and they rate an applicant as a 100%, for example, and then all of a sudden an internal panel and community and uh, staff, somehow they rate that person 80% or, or something ridiculously off. Uh, and I dare say that I would, uh, I would put more stock in objective uh, outsiders coming in who are professionals uh, as to their opinion rather than what may be driven by personal bias or a number of other host of issues that may be clouding an internal panel's judgment. Now, I don't know if that's something that you considered or not, but that is a concern of mine that has been a concern of mine as a citizen long before I was a commissioner, and it is a concern of mine as a commissioner as well. So I welcome that. I don't see any issue with that, and I wanted to put that on the record. Yeah, I'd like to Thank you, and, and that is one of my considerations. Uh, early on, we did a process, and we had dual panels, right. and I had applicants pass the professional panel and fail the internal panel, yes. and I was bewildered, and people say, because Chief, you don't know all the history and you don't know all the different things. And sometimes people come with biases and those play and themselves know, Chief, out. Forgive the interruption, you know, Chief, and maybe it's not even biases, but at least the applicant will not perceive that the lower ranking or the lower rating of the internal panel is driven by bias, which then causes to fester and create further issues that eventually end up... Uh, at our doorstep, at, the, at this commission. Uh, so uh, I actually like this uh, uh, fresh approach for now based on my past experiences. Yes. Um, I agree 100%. Uh, myself, I've sat in the last two um, captain's uh, panels. And you know what? Um, me being there and, and the assessment that I made was very limited on what I saw, the performance, and not knowing the history or not knowing what it is that I'm looking for makes it very, very difficult to rate. So I agree 100% removing, and, and the second point, I'd like you to run your department the way you see fit. And, and you're doing a great and, job, by the way. Thank you. And, and, and absolutely, and, and I, would support you 100% in, in the direction of removing this outside community panel, 100%. Thank you. Um, I have just a, a, few, a few comments as the uh, newcomer, oldcomer uh, person who was here. Newcomer. Person who was newcomer. <laughs> uh, let me just make a few comments. Uh, I wasn't able to make a comment last week, so let me, let me just make my philosophy kind of known as well. Um, the Civil Service Commission is there to do, I think, three things. One is to protect the employees from being either improperly fired or demoted by the city. Second is to, to echo what the city's management does 
by upholding some of the firings and demoting to ensure that the city knows that they're, they're backed by a panel that would back them. The third thing is to ensure that there's a transparency and the Civil Service Commission, there's no uh, good old boys um, panel, so to speak, where they appoint their own, own friends, and uh, that's the whole point of Civil Service Commission. That's, that's why the founders of the city of Glendale put the Civil Service Commission on the, on the ballot. Now, if somebody doesn't like it, they can always put it on the ballot again, and the people will vote, and they'll take it off. Um, all that said, I had a concern. When I read it, uh, my knee-jerk reaction to it was, uh, why would you eliminate a public panel? Because if you read this, on the, if you show this to the public, they're going to go, oh, God, police again trying to get, get, get something done with, with, without the approval of the public. Um, now that I hear the explanation uh, and I hear what you have said, it does make sense. Uh, makes a lot of sense for the chief to be able to pick the people that would um, basically do what the chief assigns them to do and the vision of the chief, the same way as a city council member appoints a commissioner, because they're you know, voted by the people, they have a vision, and that vision needs to be basically transferred to the commission. Same way a chief needs to be able to have a vision, and everyone underneath the chief should be able to follow that same vision. Accordingly, as I know you, of you, I know of your reputation, I know just the genuine care for the city and for the department and how you're approaching it, I don't have any problems of approving this particular item for this this next um, upcoming election, but I, I wouldn't want this to be something that I would like this to come back to us if it needs to go for us for another um, uh, for another round of uh, uh, open communication. Because I don't know if the chief is going to be here. I don't know what's going to happen five years from now, and I don't want to just approve this it. This is for this bulletin only. I understand right? that. No, but it, it doesn't need to be brought in front of us. It, once we approve this bulletin as being changed, unless if they make any changes to the bulletin, this bulletin will be able to be used for future captain. Mr. Chair, uh, Chair Apkarian, um, because this is a sworn um, promotional recruitment, any subsequent job bulletins for the back. sworn position will come back, we'll come back to the us. Commission. But this okay. is specific to police captain. This particular bulletin we're talking about. Right, so right, I know. Right, okay. right, right, right. Okay. The list would be good for two years, I understand. So after two years, if we do another process, it would come back to you. Okay. Okay. It's Okay, well, I came in uh, pretty much in the same position as uh, Mr. Commissioner Abkarian, where I felt there was a, a problem with this in terms of, and I was looking at it uh, as his item number one, protecting the employees and the fairness to the employees in terms of getting a what I call a fair evaluation or a fair hearing, both from professionals and from the community who does interact with and depend on the, the goodwill of the, the captains. I mean, I, I'm sure that no, I agree that you're the one, the face out there, but your captains and that staff at that level are really the ones that interact on a day-to-day -day basis with the community, and I felt that it was important for them to be involved at that point. However, after hearing your explanation and hearing uh, Commissioner Abkarian's uh, thoughts on this, uh, I too am swayed and persuaded that this probably is the good way to go. And I think the main thing that uh, convinced me was your comment where uh, the, the Chief picks the personnel, and that's your job. And I agree with Commissioner Manukian that that's your job to pick them, the ones you want and the ones you need by the process you want. And it's actually the people, the community, that has to weigh in on the picking of the chief, whether it's the fire chief or the police chief or water and power or whatever. And I think that's really the, the proper place for the community to weigh in on, on the process. So with that said, I too will agree with my colleagues on the approval of this bulletin. And at this point, I'll ask if there's a motion. Move to I have a, oh, I'm sorry, did you have more? I have questions, yes, if you don't Oh, mind. please, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I have a couple of questions. Any time today I ask, will be I ask for your indulgence, thank you. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, and I'll take it from the uh, from the bulletin uh, specification for approval and, and go forward from there. It's said that the Glendale Management Association has been given an opportunity to review the job bulletin and the class specification series. And 
have they chimed in? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, yes, the GMA was contacted and they expressed no reservations or concerns. Okay, because it, it didn't say that. Oh, did it say that? No, I didn't. No, it just didn't say that. Okay, so they did. They expressed no reservations. Correct. All right, I wanted to get that understood. Um, is this uh, something that the, the chief or Mr. Kwan addresses? There are... There are there are levels, police sergeant, police lieutenant, and police captain. Uh, as to those, um, I don't have any questions about the police sergeant uh, specifications. On the police lieutenant, I always thought that Glendale police lieutenants had a master's degree. But now I'm realizing that a bachelor, bachelor degree, bachelor's degree is what's required and not really beyond that. And if that is the case, that has been the case, uh, I, would, I, I would say, okay, I'll accept that. But what, what causes me a little bit of concern, Chief, is when I, look at the, um, when I looked at the bulletin for police captain, and the police captain, one of the uh, descriptions of a police cap captain is listed as assists the police chief in the preparation and administration of the budget. Then down the line it says may act for the chief of police in his or her absence. This is something that had come up previously with, with respect to a civilian captain uh, 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 issue that was brought before this body. Uh, if does the police captain have a requirement to be to, to have a master's degree? No, it's desirable. It's but not desirable. Required. That's what I thought I read. So. So at what point do you, Chief, think that it would be appropriate to have that be a requirement rather than a desirability, especially since such a captain, he or she, may find himself or herself in your shoes, though difficult as it may be, in your absence, acting as the chief of police, <laughs> at the benefit of the added education and a wider spectrum of knowledge that a master's degree provides, clearly. Well, I think at this point in time, it would limit the pool without, if we, ha if we were gonna set that as a standard, I would want to set it with a two to four year windows to give applicants an opportunity because what I have seen in terms of, um, you know, I have a master's degree, uh, I attended command college with Deputy Chief Povolitis, which is an 18 month basically secondary master's degree. And at that time, there was, I made the sacrifices and the choices to do that. What we find now is a lot of our managers and at the lieutenant level, their involvement with their families and their children and their coaching, they didn't always take that step. And because of their shift work, mm -hmm. they haven't made that choice. But I think if we were going to go down that road and have that discussion, it would only be fair to set for the employees this is the expectation and this is the date and time we're going to have it. Now as captains, we send a lot of our captains to command college, like, like I said, 18 month executive development school, or we send them to the National Academy, a 10 week academy at, at FBI headquarters in Quantico. So they get some of those experiences. And we recently changed it. I mean, up until, uh, was it last year? That uh, I'm trying to remember that our lieutenants required, we just changed that to not be desirable. Uh, we changed it to desirable from yeah. a requirement? Yeah. It used I, to, I there was a change, the, the previous to my employment here, the lieutenant requirement of a bachelor's degree mandatory was changed to yeah. obtain it within a certain period of time. It's been changed back to now it is mandatory at okay. the rank of lieutenant. But we're talking about bachelors. As That's to the lieutenant. bachelors, yeah. yeah, correct. See, in my perfect universe, it's a master's for lieutenant and double master's for captains and chiefs like you and uh, uh, Assistant Chief Povolitis. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's, again, I'm going to get back to full circle to your desire to allow this commission and all in the city for you to run your department. And I want you to run your report department. It's, it's food for thought, and I offer it to you, and, uh, and, and I leave it to you to, to contemplate, uh, only because if you're not there, it's, it's as though if I'm not in my law firm, 
Someone who's going to act on my behalf better be an attorney just like I am, not a paralegal, correct? Because uh, otherwise they would be, for starters, practicing law without a license, <laughs> but, but also they would be at a disadvantage because they would lack the knowledge that I ostensibly possess. How about an engineer, would you? Uh, I would not know that area, so I wouldn't <laughs> touch that area with a 10-foot pole except to touch your hand in, 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 in affection. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, th there was a remark here about police captain supplemental questionnaire. There was actually entry uh, for, uh, for supplemental questions that were presented. Uh, I, uh, I see no issue with that, except it begs the question, where's the original questionnaire? Uh, uh, because this is a supplemental questionnaire, right? So usually when, when one is being asked to review a supplemental questionnaire, Mr. Kwan, an original questionnaire would be nice to be attached to it. But um, it I think it might be supplemental to the application. Oh, I see. So <laughs> these are, it's supplemental to the application, these four additional yes, that, questions. That is correct. There is no original questionnaire. The supplemental okay. questionnaire is just in addition to whatever is being submitted with the form. Very well. I stand corrected. Thank you. Uh, and last but not least, what is the, when you talk about promotional eligibility, uh, I think Mr. Kwan can perhaps answer this. Thank you, Chief. Uh, the promotional eligibility section on page 16 of my packet. Yes. It says any city of Glendale employee who meets the minimum qualifications uh, has completed probation of six months of city employment. Well, I mean, th does that really apply? I mean, who, who would be not completed, who, who, who has not completed six months of employment can possibly apply for any of these positions, for captain or otherwise? From another city, maybe? It's maybe. just, uh, that language is boilerplate language. Right. It, it is. And so... Uh, in order to qualify for this, you would have to be a current, uh, to have been a current Glendale police lieutenant for at least two years. Uh, that's the under experience section, as uh, as well as being a saw that promotional elsewhere. employee. Right. I saw that. So, so really, this doesn't really apply. It's just cut and paste boilerplate language that shouldn't really even be here. But you, I don't mind it being there, just so I understand. I'm that's, not missing something there. Uh, that's correct. Okay. It's just there because it's it's always there. Well, it, because it is a, a promotional recruitment, that is the reason why it's there. Okay. Well, although what Commissioner Manukian said makes sense, I suppose, if the facts yeah, call for that's it. That's the only just Yes. Surprise. One of the reasons that that's commonly there in a boilerplate yeah. is the bargaining groups want that so that they ensure that the promotion is done internally and not externally. That's why they want that. Oh, sometimes. okay. All in right. there. So it would be a ch I would have to come back and make a change if I chose to open up that particular okay. promotional to the outside. So usually it's okay. the bargaining groups who require that and why they put six months, it just, that ensures they're locked right. in. Okay, very well, thank you. Mr. Kwan, we both learned something about this. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, Chief. I think we had a motion. Move to approve. Uh, just one quick, right. one quick uh, uh, note on this, uh, just to stay consistent with what we said last week. In reference to ensure department services are, uh, are provided with the highest customer service, I thought we were going to say exceptional customer service, which is what we decided we were going to say on all of the customer service. Way stuff. too many attorneys on this board. I'm not no, no, I mean, just, just not, last week we I'm said not saying gonna, anything. Last no. week we were saying that we're going to do everything exceptional customer service, and it says exceptional customer service in the next page. So just to stay consistent, just, just to ensure that the uh, ma uh, city manager is happy. We move to modify that to exceptional. Okay. Move to approve as printed. Second. <laughs> <laughs> With modification. With modifications. With modification. I think it's unanimous. Have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Oh, it's not unanimous? What? It's not unanimous? It is. I, I want to do roll call. Okay. Roll call. This is a test. Roll call. Just give our names. Oh. oh. <laughs> Commissioner Gazarian? Yes. Commissioner Manukian? Yes. Commissioner Karian? Yes. Chair Devine? Yes. Thank you. Okay, next item, please. Class specification for approval police services assistant. Oh, there's one. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the commission, uh, the subject before you is the new class specification for approval for police services assistant. 
The, this classification was uh, approved by the City Council um, just last night, as a matter of fact. This position is responsible for processing filming and public safety related permits, conducting data collection and research for the department, as well as assisting with media relations and community outreach. Uh, the position will also perform some general administrative support for the department and will uh, be assigned to the police chief's office. Again, this is a new class specification for approval, and the GCEA, uh, the Glendale City Employees Association, has been given an opportunity to review the specification. My understanding is they have not expressed concerns. Uh, Deputy Chief uh, Povolitis and uh, Russ Kwan from Human Resources are both here to answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you. I have, one question. I have one question. I have one question. Okay. I think I called you assistant chief. I don't know if, which is better, but I heard dep deputy chief. Deputy chief is. Deputy chief it is. How are you? Good. Um, this is the position that answers to the uh, chief's adjutant. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. In one of the positions. I'm sorry? It'll be one of the positions that will answer to the chief's adjutant. Right. And the chief's adjutant generally is a sergeant, uh, is, or is it not required? Generally, it's generally a sergeant. Generally, it's a sergeant. I know that it's generally been a sergeant. Um, my question is, uh, the, the police services assistant, is that a sworn officer? No, this will be a non-sworn professional staff position. Okay. Um, I guess what I have a concern about is that on page 20 there's an entry it says may represent the department on various departmental citywide or community based committees and on page 21 it talks about education as an associate of arts degree as being desirable but not required so that kind of leaves me with a with an individual whose education level can can be no more than a high school diploma. Uh, but I do note that thankfully there is an experience provision of four years experience performing community outreach or public relations work. Um, and previous experience working within a law enforcement environment is highly desirable. Uh, is it sufficient? You know better your department than I do, but is it sufficient these qualifications for that position? Yes, uh, Commissioner uh, Gazarian, we, we've looked at this, and as we've looked at what I'll call the Office of the Chief of Police, which is the administrative support, right. the Chief's adjutant, and that type, of, and that type of stuff, and where we've needed, uh, where we need support. Uh, if we have someone with that level of experience uh, and working in a police environment, that education and that experience is sufficient. And when we're looking at putting somebody onto a commission or a committee, it could be something, you know, hypothetically like traffic safety okay. or a community outreach or, uh, you know, something where they would represent us on a committee, but it would be appropriate to the level. There would be other things, you know, for instance, that I might sit on or the chief's adjutant might sit on or the chief right. might sit on. But there is a possibility because this person we expect to be out working with the community and and assisting the adjutant and helping us with our community outreach and to a certain extent our public information outreach, they could be representing us in various places. Okay, very well. Thank you. I'm satisfied. Thank you very much. I just had one quick question. Uh, according to this, this all reports to the police chief, where is your position in this uh, as deputy chief? Would this person report to you also? or? They would work out of the office. They would work for both myself and the chief. I get to fill a dual role. So I have, as a deputy chief, I have operational responsibility for one of the functional divisions, and I also fill in the role of deputy chief. Okay. Do we put a box down here? Here, I'm, I made you a box right there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sticks off to the side. Uh... Okay. That's all I have. Any more questions? Move, move to approve. Just, Second. just one again. Just to stay consistent again. Exceptional. Is to, there an exceptional the exception. versus? There's a highly. Uh, Customer service just exceptional. Just, just to stay consistent with what we've done consistently <laughs> since last week. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Epcarin, we'll go back to the various class specifications and we'll make sure to update Move that to language. Move to approve with the modification. Second. 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 Yes. Second. This will be unanimous consent. Ah, thank you. Okay, next, please. <clears throat> class specification and job bulletin for approval, GIS analyst. Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, um, again, the subject before you is twofold, a revised class specification and a job bulletin for approval for the position of GIS analyst. 
uh, GIS, uh, which stands for Geographic Information Systems. Uh, the GIS analyst is responsible for maintaining the city's uh, GIS applications and databases. This information is used for mapping services and to perform various uh, data analysis. Uh, this specification was last approved in uh, 2011, and the proposed modifications seek to clarify the essential functions and bring the duties more up to date. In addition to the revised class specification, we have the job bulletin uh, being presented for approval. Earlier this evening, I mentioned the four circumstances when job bulletins come before the commission for approval. One of those instances had to do with uh, when uh, a bulletin is, uh, or a position is recruited for on a promotional basis. If the department wishes to conduct a recruitment on an open basis, that bulletin has to come before the commission for approval since in its previous administration it was uh, done so on a promotional basis. Uh, that is the reason uh, the job bulletin is here for your approval again. And uh, the department feels that um, posting this on an open basis will broaden the applicant pool with the specialized skill set required for this position. The Glendale Management Association has been given an opportunity to review the job bulletin and the class specification, and my understanding is they have not expressed any concerns with um, either the class specification or the job um, bulletin. Chief Information Services Officer uh, Brian Ganley is here to answer any questions you may have, as well as uh, Russ Kwong from our staff. Move to approve. Second. Second. Unanimous decision. Thank you, Brian. Great job. Okay, next, please. Civil Service Commission staff comments. Do we have any comments? Happy birthday. Happy Tim. birthday. Thank you. Whose birthday? Thank you. Commissioner Manhukian. Oh. Happiest of all birthdays to my dear oh. colleague and friend. He's 21 today. Right? <laughs> 21. Okay, next. Thank you. Adjournment. Move to adjourn. We are adjourned.